Now we're going to look at ways to solve simultaneous equations. In this video, we're going to do a method called elimination. And in the next one, we're going to do substitution. So there's two different ways. And first off, a simultaneous equation is a pair of two equations that looks like this. So we have two variables in each one, and we have two equations. And we want to find out values of x and y that satisfy both of these equations at the same time. So that's what the word simultaneous means. Okay, now I've labeled e this equation equation one and the second one equation two. And it's important to keep track of what you're doing to each equation. Now there's two things you can do to manipulate an equation. So you can multiply both sides by a number or you can add or subtract equations together. So that's the only two things you can do to equations to manipulate them. And for us, we're gonna look at solving them by elimination. So what that means is we want to eliminate one of these variables by, for example, adding the equations together or multiplying by number. So we're eliminating one of these variables, x or y, it doesn't really matter. And then we just have an equation in one variable, which we can solve. Okay, so let's look at this example. We want to get two terms of a variable in both equations. So what we're gonna do is take the second equation and we're gonna multiply it by three. So this is just to keep track of what we're doing. So we're taking the second equation, multiply both sides by three. We're gonna get three times three x is nine x. Three times minus y is minus three y. And three times 23 is 69. And I'm going to label this equation number three. This equation has identical solutions to equation two. We've just multiplied both sides by a, the same number, so we're not changing anything about the equation. And now you can see that in equation three and in equation two, we have two terms involving three y. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add equation one and equation three, and then the three y terms are gonna cancel out. So I'll just write this over here. We're gonna add equation one and equation three. So we have to add the left-hand sides together and the right-hand sides together. So if we add 2x plus 3y, this is from equation 1, and we're going to add three, uh, 9x, minus, 9x minus 3y. And then on the right-hand side, we're going to add 8 and 69 together. And this simplifies as 77. Okay, so now the 3y's are going to cancel out. And we've just got an equation involving x's. So let's collect the terms. We have 11x on the left-hand side, and we have 77 on the right-hand side. And now this is just going to solve by dividing both sides by 11. We're just going to get x is equal to 7. So this is half of the solution. Now we also want to know what value of y uh, that corresponds to this value of x uh, that also solves both equations. So all we need to do is substitute this value of x into either one of these equations. It doesn't matter which one. Uh, we're going to go for the second one because there's only one um, coefficient of y, and that's going to make it a bit simpler. So let's go up here, and we're going to substitute x is equal to 7 into the second equation. So I'm just going to write substitute into substitute into just to keep track of what we're doing. And we're going to get 3 times x, x is 7, then minus y, that's what we're trying to find out, and this equals 23. So if we just solve this, we're going to rearrange uh, for y, let's add y onto the right hand side, and subtract by 23. So we have 3 times 7, which is 21, subtract by 23 on both sides, and add y onto the right hand side. And then 21 minus 23, that's just minus 2. So we get that y is equal to minus two. And this is the second half of the solution. So together, x equals seven and y equals minus two. This forms the solution of this pair of simultaneous equations. Okay, let's look at a second example. We're going to do three x plus eight y is equal to 33. And six x is equal to three plus five y. So this is, the second equation is now rearranged in a slightly different form. It doesn't actually matter. We're going to use the same technique. So firstly, I'm just going to label first equation as equation one and the second equation as equation two. So just as before, we want to multiply one of these equations by number so that the same term of one variable 
appears in both equations. So we can eliminate x or we can eliminate y, um, but we see here that if we multiply the first equation by 2, then we're going to get 6x in both of these equations. So I'm just going to write down 2 times the first equation. And now if we multiply 2 by the first equation on both sides, we're going to get 2 times 3x, which is 6x, 2 times 8y, which is 16y, and 2 times 33. So this equals 66. And let's label this as equation 3. So just as I said before, this equation is identical to the first equation. So we're now just considering equation 2 and equation 3. And we see that both of these equations have a 6x term. So if we were to subtract one from the other, this term would just cancel out. So that's what we're going to do. So it doesn't matter what order we do this in. Let's do equation 2 minus equation 3. And then we get 6x on the left-hand side minus the left-hand side of equation 3. 6x plus 16y. And then on the right-hand side, we have 3 plus 5y from equation 2, and then 66 from equation 3. So now the 6x's cancel out. You can see this. And we've just got an equation involving y, which we can solve. So let's distribute the negative sign. We have minus 16y is equal to, well, 3 minus 66. That's just minus 63. So we have 5y minus 63. And now let's rearrange to find y on its own. So let's add 16y onto that side and add 63 onto this side. So we have 63 is equal to 16y plus 5y. That's 21y, 16 plus 5. And then all we have to do is divide by 21. And 63 is 3 times 21. So we get y is equal to 3 as our solution, well, half the solution. So now our second step is to substitute this value of y into one of the original equations and use this to find the uh, variable x. And that's the second half of the solution. So let's substitute into the first equation. This is the simplest. And I'll just go up here. And let's write substitute in 1. Okay, so we have 3x, that's what we we're trying to work out, and 8y, so plus 8, and y is equal to 3, so 8 times 3, and this is equal to 33. So all we've done is substitute the value of y into the first equation. And now we can uh, solve this, we have 3x is equal to 33 minus 8 times 3, 8 times 3 is 24, so I've just moved that onto the right hand side. And now 33 minus 24, that's 9. So we have 3x is equal to 9. And we just divide by 3 to get x is equal to 3. So x is equal to 3 and y is equal to 3. This is the solution of this pair of simultaneous equations. Now I just want to make one remark about what this means geometrically. So what are we actually doing? What does this look like on a graph, for example? So we have two equations. And each one's got a variable of x and a variable of y. So we could rearrange this to have an equation uh, y is equal to a function of x. And that, that equation would be a straight line. So both of these equations are equations of straight lines. So for example, if you were to draw this on an xy plane, we have one line like this, for example, and one like this. And what we're actually doing by solving this um, pair of simultaneous equations we're finding the value of x and y where these lines meet, right? So this is the geometric interpretation of what um, we're doing by solving this uh, pair of simultaneous equations. So that's another way to think about this problem.